in this lecture i will discuss about the energy band structure of insulator semiconductor and metal that is by looking at this energy band structure we can easily identify the material is like an insulator semiconductor or metal so before we discuss this concept first we will recap what we discussed in the previous lecture that is in the previous lecture we discussed the energy band theory of crystals that is to form a crystal or solid so it is a collection of so many number of atoms so we have to bring so many number of atoms together then only it will form as a solid or crystal but when we are bringing these uh, atoms closer and closer so there is some changes happens in this atoms the collect or we can say crystal so that is the higher energy levels that is the valence orbits or valence levels or we can generally we say energy levels are split into energy bands right so when are they are splitting into energy bands the upper energy band is called conduction band and the lower energy band is called valence band right and we have seen these two energy bands will be split by an energy gap which is called capital eg right and in this energy gap there is no filled states or we can say there is no or we can say zero states are available for this electrons to sit that is this band is called forbidden band that means there is no states are available to sit these electrons right and we have seen for the silicon crystal that is conduction band will be in empty mode but whereas in valence band it is fully filled with this electrons so we have seen this so many n atoms are there means four n states are available for this electrons and four n electrons will be there that is fully filled with this electrons that is valence band this is like a simple a energy band structure of the semiconductor that we will see in a different way in this lecture similarly we can uh, see the energy band structure of insulator as well as the metal first we will define what is an insulator semiconductor and metal then we will discuss about this energy band structures so insulator it is a very poor conductor of electricity that is there is no current flow in this type of materials so it is a very poor conductor very poor conductor of electricity that is there is no current flow in this materials even if we apply any amount of energy or electric field so there is no movement of these electrons that is there is no movement of electrons means there is no current at all now before we define the semiconductor we will define the first metal that is so insulator is a very poor conductor so it is an excellent conductor of electricity it is an excellent conductor of electricity that is the moment we the moment we apply some electric field the current start flowing whereas in insulator there is no current flow at all right so so many number of uh, electrons available in this uh, materials the moment we apply some electric field the electrons start moving that means the current start flowing whereas in semiconductor the uh, conductivity lies between insulator and metal so in this the conductivity conductivity lies between insulator and metals that is we can control the current in this semiconductors that is depending on some mechanism we can vary this conductivity now we will see energy band structure of an insulator in the previous lecture we discussed about the energy band theory of crystals that is how the energy levels are splitting into energy bands when the atoms are moving closer and closer right but that is not required always how they are uh, splitting into energy bands and how, how the conduction is taking place now we can simply draw the two energy bands that is the upper energy band which is called conduction band and the lower energy band which is uh, called as valence band now we can simply draw those uh, energy bands and we can comment on the conductivity that is like this the upper energy band is called conduction band or we can simply write as cb and the lower energy band is called v uh, valence band or simply vb and the energy band which is lies in between this conduction band and valence band is called forbidden band now why the names are given like this there is a some reason the forbidden band means there is no allowable energy states in this region that means there is no possibility of electrons in this region whenever there is a, a, a what you call energy states then only the electrons will come and sit in those energy states 
so no energy state means no electrons possible in this region that is the reason forbidden band why the lower energy band is called valence band that is when you have seen the orbital model of the silicon atom in the previous lecture the red circles are called valence orbits and the electrons which are in these orbits are called valence electrons right and when we see this energy band theory this valence electrons will come into the lower energy states that lower energy states are with the lower energy band is called valence band so that is the reason these all valence electrons will come into this lower energy band and it will be sit in this energy states that's the reason this is always completely filled this valence band is always completely filled means this all uh, valence electrons will come into the energy band which is lower energy band right that is the reason why this valence band is given the name now so and uh, one more thing is so this is we can say this is completely filled with the valence electrons and this valence valence electrons are bounded electrons right they are not moving even though when you apply some electric field they are not ready to move right but the moment this valence electrons will come into the conduction band these electrons will come as a free electron the moment these electrons are free now when we apply some electric field they are ready to move so that is the reason this given name is conduction band when the electrons are in this conduction band that is they are ready to move when they are moving the conduction is takes place and generally or uh, initially the insulator or a semiconductor it is in empty mode or empty state these energy states are empty there is no electrons in this energy state so that is the reason why the names are given like this right the next one is the gap between this conduction band and valence band is called energy gap this is called as energy gap and the uh, notation we will use e capital g and some books they will use e small g also right now for the insulators this energy gap is very large compared to the semiconductor so it is approximately greater than or equal to 5 electron volt and some books they will follow 6 electron volts also so because of this high energy gap there is no conductivity takes place in this insulator reason is the moment we need to suppose if i apply some electric field to move this uh, electrons from this valence band to conduction band so this electrons to move this high energy gap so these electrons are not able to move from this valence band to conduction band because of this high energy gap so that is the reason there is no conductivity in this insulator right if i take an example the simply the carbon as a diamond crystal right the carbon element even though it is a fourth group element and the diamond texture of this carbon element is diamond crystal or a carbon crystal is having the energy gap is same as 5 electron volt right that means the electrons which are available in this valence band are not able to move from valence band to the conduction band so that is the reason there is no conductivity in this diamond crystal also so these are all insulator similarly the uh, one examples are air wood etc right so this is about the energy band structure of an insulator i hope you got the what is the meaning of conduction band forbidden band valence band and what is the energy gap and for insulator this energy gap is very high so even though we apply some electric field or uh, some uh, energy these electrons are not able to move to the conduction band that is the reason there is no conductivity possible next we will discuss about the energy band structure of a semiconductor so before we discuss this concept so we need some conversion that is a temperature conversion if i want temperature in degree kelvin so temperature in degree kelvin and if i am having a degree centigrade temperature so it is nothing but degree centigrade plus we need to add 273 that is example if i take t equal to 0 kelvin so what is this meaning is the degree centigrade if i make conversion it is nothing but minus 273 degree centigrade the temperature in degree centigrade is nothing but minus 273 if suppose example if i take the temperature is equal to 27 degree centigrade so what is the equivalent conversion in uh, kelvin is so temperature in degree kelvin is equal to 27 plus 273 so it is nothing but 300 kelvin right so this 27 degree centigrade we can say it is a room temperature yes or no 
generally we take 25 degrees also so but 270 uh, 27 degrees if i take i will get the temperature in kelvin as 300 degree kelvin right so this is some uh, conversions you should remember now if i see the energy band structure of a semiconductor so it is looking uh, similar to the insulator energy band diagram that is the connection band is empty and valence band is filled but the energy gap is very small compared to the insulator that is so generally this energy gap is approximately around 1.1 electron volt it may be semi uh, silicon or it may be germanium and different different semiconductors around 1.1 or maybe 1.5 also right now due to this small energy gap the moment we apply some uh, energy it may be thermal energy it may be uh, optical energy or some external uh, electric field these electrons which are in the uh, valence band they will move into the conduction band right but we can say at t equal to 0 kelvin the semiconductor uh, band structure is equal to the insulator that is at t equal to 0 degree kelvin semiconductor is like an insulator is like an insulator if i take silicon semiconductor at d t equal to 0 degree kelvin so there is no energy so we are not applying any energy to this uh, valence band electrons to move from uh, to move to the connection band so there is no connectivity possible so whenever there is no connectivity it is like an insulator now if we apply some thermal energy suppose at t equal to 300 degree kelvin the moment we apply some thermal energy if i increase the temperature this valence electrons will acquire some energy and they will move from valence band to the conduction band so whenever we are having the electrons in the conduction band the conductivity takes place so at t equal to 300 degree kelvin the energy gap is very small so due to that the electrons are moving to the conduction band then conductivity is taking place so conduction is possible conduction is possible at 300 degree kelvin so how the energy band will look like something like this so at 300 degree kelvin the structure of silicon semiconductor is so the energy gap is uh, of silic silicon semiconductor is approximately 1.1 1 .1 electron volt suppose some number of electrons are moving to the conduction band that means they will leave the empty energy states in this valence band and these electrons are like a these are called free electrons and these are all called empty energy levels so later we will see these empty energy levels are called holes that anyway we will see later the moment we are having the free electrons now if we apply some electric field the electrons will now moving when the electrons are moving we can have a current yes or no so that is the energy band structure of this silicon or we can say semiconductors it may be silicon it may be germanium or it may be compound semiconductors we have to discuss the one parameter that is energy gap per semiconductor in semiconductor the energy gap is dependent on the temperature as temperature is increasing this energy gap will decrease now how that is happening that we will see right so we will see this energy gap the energy gap in a semiconductor depends on the temperature how it will depend on is if i take silicon the silicon semiconductor the energy gap if the temperature is equal to something like this this is 1.21 minus 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 into t and t here measured in degree kelvin so t in t in degree kelvin or simply kelvin right if i take the germanium the energy gap with the temperature is 0.785 minus 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 4 in t again t in kelvin right now if i take t is equal to 0 kelvin so at t equal to 0 kelvin the semiconductor energy gap is nothing but at 0 kelvin is equal to 1.21 electron volt you have to remember this value at t equal to 0 kelvin what is the energy gap of the silicon semiconductor now if i make this at room temperature at 300 degree kelvin the energy gap at 300 degree kelvin is 1.1 electron volt that is if i substitute this t equal to 300 degree kelvin in this equation so we will get approximately 1.11 electron volt so this is also we have to remember for silicon 
so we may get question so at t, uh, t equal to 300 degree kelvin what is the uh, energy gap of the uh, silicon or uh, germanium are different so they will give at t equal to 0 degree kelvin the energy gap is something like this so maybe 0 0.785 then at t equal to 200 uh, kelvin what is the value so we have to use this expression to find now similarly this is for silicon so similarly for germanium so eg at uh, 0 kelvin is equal to 0 0.785 electron volt this is for germanium at t equal to 300 degree kelvin if i substitute this in this uh, second expression i will get eg at 300 degree kelvin is equal to 0 0.72 electron volt this is for germanium so these uh, four uh, values we need to remember right we may get direct question also or maybe indirect question or sometimes we have to use these uh, values in some uh, other uh, example or, uh, when you are doing some numericals so we have to remember all these values at t equal to 0 degree kelvin 1.21 electron for silicon and 300 degree kelvin it will become as 1.11 so here germanium means 0 0.785 and uh, for uh, th at 300 degree kelvin it will become as 0 0.72 electron volt right next we will see the energy band structure of a metal now in this metal the energy band that is connection band will be partially filled or sometimes the two, two energy band that is connection band and uh, valence band will be overlap something like this see even though we don't apply any thermal energy the conduction band will be partially filled that is the moment we apply some electric field the conduction takes place and uh, when at t equal to 300 degree kelvin the energy bands will be overlap that is so many number of electrons are available in this conduction band or similarly as valence band also so this is our overlap between this connection band and valence band so so many number of available electrons are there the moment we apply some electric field the conduction takes place so this is about the this energy band structures of this insulator semiconductor and metal